Yo ho, what up, what up? It's your boy, Patrick from All Things Mathematics, reporting to you live from the beautiful Philippines. More specifically, we are in Port Barton on the Palawan Island. So I started off in Balabac, which is the southern part. And I mean, just no words to describe. I'm just gonna put a bunch of footage from there. Now I'm in Port Barton and then tomorrow heading to El Nido. Still got a few weeks to go here. And while I am out here, decided that I am going to do an entire polynomial functions unit test with you, bring you along for the adventure. So as usual, as as like the rest of the tests on my site. Test is gonna have knowledge questions, thinking questions, application questions, communication questions. Before doing the test, I'm assuming you've watched all the lecture videos for this unit on my site, allthingsmathematics.com. If you haven't, highly recommend you watch those first. I'm assuming you already have a foundational knowledge. And then there's also other unit tests you can try. Make sure you get as much exposure to different scenarios so you could be as best prepared for your actual test. Now a PDF of this test you can find on the website. I will put a link in the description if you are watching this on YouTube. What I'd recommend is not trying the entire test on your own. Try each question individually on your own first. So first try knowledge question one on your own, then watch the solution. Then try knowledge question two, then watch the solution. Just in case there's any mistakes or flaws in your process, it's not carrying over through the entire test. You can catch it and each question individually as you go along. I also hold tutoring sessions with students over Zoom, both one-on-one -on -one and in groups, both high school and university students. So if you do feel like you need personalized help or there are some things that you just wanna clarify before your test, then uh, you could hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Pretty much doing Zoom sessions seven days a week with students, so shoot me a text over WhatsApp. My number is on my website and uh, we will schedule something. We'll get some sessions going. And then if there's any of your friends who you feel can benefit from these videos who are also taking grade 12 advanced functions, feel free to forward them. The website does help me out a lot. All right, so let's get right into it. Knowledge question one. So in this particular question, what is happening is we are given a bunch of graphs and we have to state which of these graphs represent polynomial functions. Now, graphically, there are three main characteristics that I like to look at. Number one, the function has to be continuous everywhere. Also, number two, the domain is X is an element of real numbers, so it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Unless, of course, you're dealing with word problems and there can be restrictions on the domain, but here we are just looking at abstract functions. And then the third one is the end behaviors. Remember, with polynomial functions, as X goes towards negative infinity or positive infinity, the Y values also have to go to either positive infinity or negative infinity. And that depends on the sign of the leading coefficient and the degree. And so if I see a graph where one of those three characteristics are failing, then I know it's not going to be a polynomial function. Well, with the graph in part A, notice that this particular graph does satisfy those characteristics, right? We got the end behaviors going from quadrant two to quadrant four. So we know it's an odd degree polynomial. The domain is XCR and it's fully continuous. There is no breaks in the domain. There's no breaks in the graph, right? You can go from one side to the next without taking your pencil off the paper you could draw the entire graph. So the first function, first graph is a polynomial. Now the second one, notice that it is continuous. The domain is also XCR, but what's the issue? Well, notice that we have a horizontal asymptote in this case, right? More specifically, as X goes towards negative infinity, the Y values are going towards negative two. They're not going towards positive infinity or negative infinity, right? On the right side, as X goes towards positive infinity, the Y values are going towards positive infinity, 
but not on the left side. And so more specifically, this is an exponential function. It is not a polynomial function. Now, the third graph, notice that this particular graph, I mean, it fails all three characteristics, right? There is a break in the domain. Notice that there is a vertical asymptote at an x value of three, and therefore the function is also not continuous. And then notice that there's a horizontal asymptote on both sides, right? The y values are going towards zero on both sides. And so that third characteristic of the end behaviors also fail. More specifically, this is a rational function. So the third graph is also not a polynomial function. The fourth graph, notice that it does satisfy all three characteristics. It is a polynomial function. This one is going to have an even degree because it's going from quadrant two to quadrant one. It's also going to have a positive leading coefficient. I know the question is not asking that, but thought I would mention it. And notice that there's also a bounce on one of the x-intercepts at an x value of one, but that can happen with a polynomial function. Okay, so this fourth graph is a polynomial function. The fifth graph, hopefully looking at it, you could tell it's a sinusoidal function. So one of the trig functions, sine or cos. So the domain is XER. It is continuous throughout the entire domain. However, the end behavior, the y values are not going towards positive infinity or negative infinity on the left or right side, right? It just keeps alternating between the max and the min forever. So this one is not a polynomial, it's a sinusoidal function. And then the last graph, this one is also not a polynomial. It is continuous over the entire domain. Notice that the end behavior on the right side, as x goes towards positive infinity, y goes towards positive infinity. However, the domain is not XCR. Okay, the domain is restricted. It starts at an x value of three. And more specifically, this is a radical function. So the square root of x minus three. For example, there could be some other stretch or compression there. However, the point is, it is not a polynomial. All right, so with a question like this, those are the three characteristics that I usually like to look at. And usually that is enough to tell you whether a graph is gonna be a polynomial or not. All right, I'm going to get off the beach. Gonna come back here later for sunset. Just chill at one of these little beach bars here. And actually now what I'm gonna do is go get a haircut. Hair is not too long right now, but I know that once I get to El Nido, once I meet up with Giannis, he's been here a bunch of times, so we're just going to be super Hi. active exploring. Hey, what's up? How's it going? <laughs> The trip is gonna be super active uh, with him. So over the next few weeks, I don't know if I'm even gonna have a chance to get a haircut. So I'm just gonna get it over with now. Now I remember walking by a barber somewhere here and I just arrived and they're closed. Do you know what time they open? Okay, thank you. The lady told me that there is another barber over here. Said it's gonna be somewhere on this road. By the way, look at that basketball net right there. Excuse me. Is there a barber shop on this road? Ah, uh, Ah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Found it right here. You're open? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. When you see me, I'll have a new haircut. See you then. Peace. Yo, how's it look? I'm feeling nice. More, you know, aerodynamic. Lots of people on the street. All right, so just approaching that restaurant, Flo. Gonna pound out some work. Let's go check it out. Okay, nice and set up here where I'm working from. Got my buddy here as well. Hey. All right, just finished working there for a few hours. Started to burn out a bit. So I'm gonna take a little break and go for a run and do a little workout on the beach. I wanted to do the next question there, but the music was a little loud. So I decided to do it on the walk to my hotel. It's a nice little walk anyway here. Next question, knowledge question two. Now, few things I want to mention. So for part A, getting the degree and leading coefficient, we have to get the leading term of each polynomial. Now, when a polynomial is fully expanded, like it is in part A and B, it's super easy to do. However, when a polynomial is in factored form, like in part C, then it's tougher to do. 
you have to think about what the leading term would be if the polynomial was expanded. And I've done exercises like that in the lecture videos. So this is just gonna be one case, but make sure you go through those lecture videos, those different cases, cause there's a specific way to get the uh, leading term. Next thing I wanna talk about, which is also review from the lecture videos. It was in the first section though. So it might've been a little while since you've covered it is in part C, they're asking for the minimum and maximum number of turning points. And remember that depends on the degree of the polynomial and more specifically, whether it's an even degree or an odd degree. So if it's an odd degree, there doesn't necessarily have to be a turning point. A good example of that is a line, right? A line is an odd degree polynomial. So the minimum number of turning points for an odd degree polynomial is zero. And then the maximum number of turning points for any polynomial is always the degree minus one or n minus one if we let n represent the degree. Now for an even polynomial, the minimum number of turning points has to be one. So the lowest even degree you could have is a quadratic. A quadratic always has a turning point, more specifically the vertex. Now with the intercepts, it also depends on whether it's an odd or even degree polynomial. So if it's an odd degree, there has to be at least one x-intercept and then the maximum number of x-intercepts for any polynomial is always going to be the degree which is n even degree polynomial there doesn't necessarily have to be any x-intercepts right you could have a quadratic for example that has no x-intercepts so the minimum number of x-intercepts for an even degree polynomial is zero and then the maximum is also n it's also the degree All right so i wanted to get that out of the way first before we get into the actual polynomials so now the first polynomial, notice what is the leading term? Negative six x to the four. So we can get a lot of information from there. Leading coefficient is negative six. The degree is four. Now in part B, because it has a negative leading coefficient and it has an even degree, we know that the end behavior is gonna be from quadrant three to quadrant four. Now, if you're using the other notation, the quadrant three end behavior, we could say as X approaches negative infinity, the Y values are approaching negative infinity, and the quadrant four end behavior as X approaches positive infinity, the Y values are approaching negative infinity as well. Now, part C, the minimum and maximum number of turning points, well, as we said, it depends on the degree of the polynomial, which in this case is four, which is an even degree. And so we know that an even degree polynomial has to have a minimum of one turning point, and then the maximum is always n minus one. So in this case, degree is four, so four minus one, there's a maximum of three turning points for this polynomial. And then for the x-intercepts for part D, minimum number of x-intercepts for an even degree polynomial, that is zero. And then the maximum number of x-intercepts is always gonna be the degree. So in this case, it is the n value of four. All right, that is it for question 2A. Just approaching my hotel here, Hotel Oasis. So tomorrow I am driving to El Nido. And so we will continue the question then parts b and c try it yourself see if you're able to get it right as i mentioned at the beginning of the test try these questions yourself individually pause the video try yourself then watch the uh, video solutions so i am gonna go for my run now but uh, i will see you tomorrow we'll finish the question then peace out Berkey's here, bro. Berkey's here. How oh, are you, bro? No, no, no. We just had to drop like some other people off at a hostel. How was your uh, drive? Six, six hours from Puerto Princesa. You took a shower and everything, though. Yeah.
Nice. I really needed that shot, bro. Catch you on the back. All right, we're gonna head to a cafe, smoothies and stuff. You could just get them off the street. That's awesome. Yeah. Mango smoothie. Oh, that's amazing. There's what, just cafes along this like shoreline? Yeah, this is like the main, main road. This is a really nice restaurant. We should be here sometimes. Yeah. Like Italian pizza and stuff. Okay. Uh, over there is like the biggest hostel called Friends. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard about it. Yeah, There's the another one called Outpost, but it's like further out. That one's like, don't go there. That one's like in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah, uh, we so dropped it out. Yeah. Yeah, you want to go to Friends because they have a the rooftop pool. Everyone's always going there. Oh, okay. So that's a place to get. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is a smoothie shake. Yeah. Like, yeah. We come back later. <laughs> At one point, it was pouring on one of the boat rides in Balabak. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was getting like nervous. Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh. Maybe go back to that Italian restaurant? Crazy. Crazy. I saw the rain coming towards us. It's like a wall. I was like, wait, is it raining back there? It's like wow. Like this is crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right, while we're waiting, let's uh, get into question 2B. So in this particular case, the polynomial is a little bit rearranged, but notice that the leading term is at the end. It's X cubed. So the leading coefficient is one. The degree is three. And then for part B, the end behavior, well, because the degree is odd and the leading coefficient is positive, we know it's gonna go from quadrant three to quadrant one. And if you were to do it in that other notation, as X approaches negative infinity, the Y values approach negative infinity. As X approaches positive infinity, the Y values approach positive infinity as well. And then moving on to part C for this polynomial, the minimum number of turning points, well, it's an odd degree. So that's the case we're gonna be dealing with. So we know the minimum number of turning points is going to be zero. And then the maximum number of turning points is gonna be N minus one. So in this case, three minus one, which is two. And then for part D, the minimum and maximum number of x-intercepts, because it's an odd degree polynomial, the minimum number of x-intercepts is gonna be one. And then the maximum number of x-intercepts is gonna be just the degree n, which in this case is three. Checking out a gym here, might come back to later. Yo, this is a grimy gym, I love it. Okay. Okay, I like this one, bro. This one is like I like these grimy chips. I mean, they got a squat rack. That's yeah, good for me. That's good enough for me. They have everything you need. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Oh, anyway, see you, bro. Hey, take care, guys. Yeah, see you later. What is this? Hama coffee. Wow, 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 wow. Well, they got the plugs there too. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just, dude, I'm down to just come here every day. Oh, we're gonna spend all of our time. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, this is sick. This is crazy, and you could stand too. Yeah. This is just perfect. Wow. And you have the ocean here as well. Wow, 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 wow. What is this place called? Hama? Hama Coffee? Hama Coffee. All right. You come to El Nido, need a place to work? Hama Look no further place. than Hama Coffee. That's it. That's it. Crazy internet speed as well. All right, so let's go do part C outside. So this one is going to be really tough in particular. As I mentioned at the beginning, parts A and B, the polynomial was already expanded. In this case, it's in factor form. And so what we're going to have to do is figure out what would that leading term be for this polynomial if we were to expand it. You don't want to do the full expansion process because that would take you forever. You just want to get the leading term. And so to get the overall leading term, what we have to do is take the leading term from all of the factors and basically combine them, basically multiply them. So notice that the front expression, negative two X cubed, we would include that when we are finding the leading term. Now in the next factor, X minus two, the leading term is just one X. And then that is gonna go to the power two. Notice that that factor has an order of two. And then this last factor, you gotta be careful. It's five minus two X squared. And so you could think about rearranging it. It's like negative two X squared plus five. And then that factor has an order of three. So we're gonna take the leading term of the factor, which is negative two X squared, but there's gonna be like three of those. So we have to take it to the power of three and so now all that's left to do is to multiply all of these terms out. And so you got to be careful with your algebra, with your exponents, but once you expand everything, 
the overall leading term would be 16 x to the power of 11. So if you were to take this polynomial, fully expand it, that's what the leading term would be. And now we can go into answering parts A to D, since we have the leading term. Okay, so the leading coefficient is 16. The degree is 11. Now, because it has a positive leading coefficient and an odd degree, it's going to have n behavior starting with quadrant 3 and then going to quadrant 1. In the other notation, the quadrant 3 n behavior as x goes towards negative infinity, the y values are going towards negative infinity, and then for quadrant 1, as x goes towards positive infinity, the y values are going towards positive infinity as well. Now in part c, when we're doing the minimum and maximum number of turning points, again this has a degree of 11 so it's an odd degree polynomial so as we mentioned before an odd degree polynomial the minimum number of turning points is going to be zero it doesn't necessarily have to turn and then the maximum number of turning points is always going to be the degree minus one so in this case that's going to be 10. and then for part d the minimum and maximum number of x-intercepts well for an odd degree polynomial there always has to be at least one x-intercept so the minimum is one it has to cross that x-axis at some point and then the maximum number of x-intercepts is always going to be the degree which in this case is 11 and so that is that so this one was a little bit tougher again you got to think about what would the leading term be if you were to expand this and then i have a bunch of examples like this in the lecture video so make sure you go through those because this is something that can come up on your test all right i'm gonna keep uh grinding it out here a little bit go to the gym after tomorrow we're gonna go straight into exploring so i will catch you then peace out Welcome to Seven Commando Beach. Just taking a little break here. I was participating in the volleyball game. Yay! Giannis is shooting. We're uh, doing some island hopping today. And so thought this would be a good opportunity to do the next question, knowledge question three on the test. Now in this particular one, what we're gonna be doing is just standard factoring of these polynomials. Fairly standard question, but most likely you're gonna be asked about it on your test. So with this first polynomial function that we have to factor, notice that it's a quartic function. And so notice that the leading coefficient in this case is negative. Whenever the leading coefficient is negative, I always like to factor out a negative one to make the leading coefficient positive. And then from all the coefficients, we could also take out a two. They're all factors of two. So we could take out a negative two from everything. And then in brackets, we would still be left with a quartic function. And then with this quartic function to factor it, we're gonna have to use the factor theorem. So we're going to have to test out values plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take that quartic function and actually label it as g of x. So if we try g of one, notice that's not gonna give us zero. g of negative one won't give us zero. g of two won't give us zero, but then g of negative two will give us zero. We know that x plus two by the factor theorem is going to be a factor. And so then we could take that quartic function in the bracket and divide it by x plus two. And then when you do the division, you should get a remainder of zero if you're dividing by a factor. That's a nice way to check your answer with these. And so now we have it to the point where it's negative two, bracket x plus two, and then in brackets, we have a cubic function remaining, right? Which was the quotient of the division that we did. And then with a cubic function, I always like to check, can you factor it by grouping? Because then it's a lot quicker of a process. Unfortunately, in this case, we can't do that. And so we would have to do the factor theorem again. We can go through trial and error again. Now, what you want to remember is because we already tried one, negative one, and positive two before, and those didn't give us zero in that quartic function we had before, it's also not gonna give us zero in this cubic function that we have because it's all part of the same function. So you could actually skip those values when you're gonna be doing the factor theorem again. However, even though negative two worked before, it can potentially work again. You can have a double 
factor or a factor with an order of two. So you actually do want to try negative two again on this cubic function. Notice that negative two is actually going to give us zero again. So x plus two is going to be a factor again. And so overall, we would have negative two and then x plus two to the power of two. It's going to have an order of two. And then we just have a standard quadratic remaining in the bracket. You can do decomposition on that and you'd end up with two x minus three and x minus three as the other factors. All right, so that is the first polynomial to factor. I think I'm going to save the next one for the next island. I'm going to get back into this game, but I will see you then. Peace out. Got to the next destination. We are in Payong Payong Beach. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Inido. Uh, yeah, so everyone is having lunch over there on these little like hidden beaches. I'm gonna go join soon. But before I do, I wanted to do the next question. So another factoring one, what's the thing we always check for? Can we take out a greatest common factor? Notice in this case, we could take out a three X squared and we would be left with a cubic inside the bracket to factor. Now this one is gonna kind of suck because if you try out different integers to factor it, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, none are going to work. And so this is one of those polynomials where you're gonna have to use the rational zero theorem. And so I wanted to include that in case you run into a situation like that on your tests. We've gone through that in the lecture videos as well. And so remember the rational zero theorem, the potential X values that can make the polynomial equal to zero would be the factors of the constant, which is three, over the factors of the leading coefficient which is 30. So any of those combinations potentially can work. And as you can see, there's so many of them. And so one of them, I'll just tell you, it's negative one over three, negative one over three works. And we know from there, since an X value of negative one over three makes it equal to zero, we know one of the factors is three X plus one. So we could take that cubic function from the brackets divided by three X plus one. We end up with a quadratic and then you could factor that quadratic with decomposition and you end up with 2x minus 3 and 5x minus 1. Okay, so just because certain integer values for x aren't making the polynomial equal to zero, it doesn't mean that there isn't any factors, right? You can have x values that can be fractions and so just be on the lookout for those kinds of questions as well. This one in particular was pretty tough because of the leading coefficient of 30. There's just so many factors for it which uh, gives so many different possibilities that you would have to try. So it would take you quite a while, but your teacher maybe might give a leading coefficient like four, where the only factors would be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four. And then there's not as many to try, but they'll still expect you to try the different fractions, right? Until you get one of them equaling zero. So keep the rational zero theorem in mind for your test doesn't always have to be integer values for x that make it equal to zero it can also be fractions all right i'm gonna go join these guys on the beach for lunch but i will see you in the next location i think we still got two or three more to go so i'll catch you then peace They swim away from you, but they're beautiful, man. And it's a bit rare to see them. All right, so let's factor this last polynomial. So notice we have a negative leading coefficient, negative one over 64. So I'm definitely gonna take out a negative. And then we could also take out an X to the power of three. So what we would be left with in the brackets would be one over 64 x to the 6 minus 4096 over 729. And then we could factor this expression further. You can notice that this we can rewrite as a difference of squares. And so we would end up with two factors there. And then these two factors, you have to recognize that you can factor those with a difference of cubes and then also a sum of cubes using the formulas that we went over in the lecture video. So for example, the 1 over 8x cubed minus 64 over 27 
we can rewrite the 1 over 8x cubed as 1 over 2x in brackets cubed minus the 64 over 27, we could rewrite that as 4 over 3 in brackets cubed. And so now we have a difference of cubes, and then you just apply the formula to get your two factors. And then we would do the exact same thing with the sum of cubes, right? Rewriting it as 1 over 2x in brackets cubed plus 4 over 3 in brackets cubed. Apply the formula, you get your two factors there. And so overall, this question had four different factors. So pretty tricky. We first had to take out a greatest common factor, and then we had to factor it as a difference of squares, and then each of those factors we factored as a difference and sum of cubes. So anyway, that's it for question three, and that's actually it for the knowledge section. So the next section that we're gonna do is application. And I will start that on a different day. We uh, still don't know what we're gonna be doing. We got three more days in El Nido before going to Cebu, but uh, I'll keep you posted with whatever ends up happening. And we'll start the next section then. Peace out. All right, what's up, what's up? Next day in El Nido. Today is more of a chill day. We've been uh, going pretty hard with the exploring, exploring different beaches, exploring different islands. So today we wanted to just post up in the cafe and we just wanted to get some work done today. And so I am taking a break now, a little walk on the beach, and wanted to start the next section of the test, the application section. This is gonna be question one. And this is a common question that we've done in the lecture videos. So I'm assuming that at this point, you're pretty comfortable doing a question like this. And so what's happening here is we are given a polynomial and we're told that if it's divided by X minus two, the remainder is going to be eight. And when it's divided by two X plus one, the remainder is going to be negative 41 over eight. And what we have to do is find the values of A and B, the uh, two constants in the polynomial. So by the remainder theorem, if we're gonna divide any polynomial by X minus two and the remainder is going to be eight, then we know that F of two, if that polynomial is labeled as F of X, we know F of two is going to equal eight. And then if it's gonna be divided by two X plus one and the remainder is gonna be negative 41 over eight, then we know that F of negative one over two is gonna equal negative 41 over eight. And so with those two expressions, we can create two equations there. And now notice we have two equations and two unknowns, right? We can now solve for the A and B values. Now with the second equation, notice that we have a bunch of fractions there after we simplify it a bit. So at this point, I would actually multiply everything by eight, which is the lowest common denominator to get rid of the fractions. And then now you have everything in terms of integers. And now you just got to do substitution, elimination, solve for A and B, and you would get an A value of six and a B value of nine. And this is perfect timing because I am finishing the question and we have reached the end of the beach. So we're gonna head back to the cafe. I think we're gonna work for a few more hours and then after we're going to hit the gym. And so I will catch you then. Peace. All right, work session done. The last one's in here. First one's in, last one's out. Yeah. Go to our beloved grimy gym. Just arrived. Peak gym. Perfect schedule. Hama coffee for a uh, work session and then finish the day off here. Fairly empty out here. All right, let's get it started. Peace. Until fail. Fucking dead, bro. You're such a bitch. Ah! <laughs> nice. There's only so many I can do though here. And that is a wrap for the workouts. Little full body things, nothing too serious. These guys are still going at it. 
And so before I finish the night, let's go to the next question, application question two. So in this particular question, what is happening is we are given a table of values and that's gonna represent a polynomial function and we have to find the value of M in the table. And so if you look at it more specifically, they're asking for the Y value when the X value is going to be four. And so what we first have to do is find the actual equation of this polynomial from this table of values. But here's the thing, we don't know what the degree of the polynomial is gonna be. Is it gonna be a linear function? Is it gonna be a quadratic, cubic, quartic? We don't know. And so what we have to do is find the differences from the table of values, the first differences, second differences, third differences, et cetera, et cetera, and see which ones are gonna be constant, and then we'll know the degree. Okay, so for example, if the first differences are gonna be constant, then we know it's going to be a linear function, y equals mx plus b, and we'll only have two coefficients to solve for, m and b. If the second differences are gonna be constant, then we know it's gonna be ax squared plus bx plus c, and then we're gonna have three coefficients to solve for. And so if we go through the process, remember when you're finding differences, it's always the bottom y value, subtracting the top y value, the y value that's above it, and so if you go through the process, first differences, not constant. Second differences are also not constant. Notice that third differences are gonna be constant with a value of 30. And so that right there tells us that we're gonna be dealing with a cubic function since the third differences are constant. And so we know that the format of our polynomial is gonna be y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So we have four coefficients to solve for here. And so we have to make four equations and we can use four points from the table. Now, the easiest point to start with is the y-intercept of zero and negative one, because notice if we plug in zero for all of the x values and then negative one for the y value, we're just left with d is equaling negative one. So one of those constants we can get easily, that d value is gonna be negative one. And so now the new format of our polynomial that we have to solve for is gonna be y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx minus one. And so now we have three constants to solve for, A, B, and C. So you could plug in three of the points to make three equations. Personally, I like to use positive X values if possible. So I would plug in one, two, and three and create equations there. And so notice that now we'll have three simplified equations and you can solve for these constants however you want whether substitution elimination, I would probably do elimination because I'm noticing that the C values are all alone in all three of the equations. So for example, you could do like equation one minus two and then equation one minus three, the C values go away and now you got two equations with two unknowns, A and B. And if you go through the process of solving that, you'd get an A value of five and a B value of negative three. Okay, but you didn't have to do it this way that I just showed, you could have done it anyway, but make sure you're getting the same coefficients that I am for A, B, C, and D. And then to finally solve for that last C value, you could take the A and B values that you just solved and plug them in to one of the three equations that we had in terms of A, B, and C. All right, so if you plug in that A value of five, that B value of negative three, you could solve for C in any of the three equations, you'd get a C value of seven. And so now notice we have our actual polynomial, which is five X cubed minus three X squared plus seven X minus one. And so now what we can do, well, solve for that M value in the table, which remember is the Y value when the X value is four for this polynomial. So if we plug in an X value of four for this new polynomial we have, we would get a Y value of 299, and that is the M value that we had to solve for. One more thing I wanted to mention, uh, many teachers and many schools don't cover this. I did in the lecture videos, but there's another way we could have solved for that leading coefficient, that A value, once we knew that the third constant difference was 30, because we know that the constant difference from a table of values for a polynomial is always gonna equal the leading coefficient A times the factorial of the degree. 
right? And I went through this in the lecture videos. However, your teacher in your particular school may not cover this. And if they don't, then you could just ignore this part. But if they do, that's another way we could have solved for the A value. So with that formula, the constant difference is 30. We would have equals A, that's what we're solving for. And then our degree is three. And three factorial, that's three times two times one, is six. So we would have 30 equals six A divide both sides by six, we would get that A value of five, which is the same A value that we got when the longer way. All right, so I wanted to point that out as well. Whichever way you do it, that is the polynomial that you get, and then the M value is 299. All right, we are going to go to a restaurant and eat something. Not sure what is on the itinerary for tomorrow. We're kind of just playing it by ear. We have some ideas, but kind of depends on the weather here as well. But, uh, Whatever it is, I will see you then. All right, day has come. First motorbike rental of the Philippines. I haven't rode a bike here yet. Beach are we going to? It's called Dooley. Dooley Beach. Beach. Yeah. Okay. I think it's like about an hour away, so it should be a nice ride. All right, let the adventures begin. Boyana's getting on. See you in a bit. station break pretty smooth ride so far a little bit more off-road in here this is the right road actually i said no 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 it's set to dooley beach yeah. oh no 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 i thought it said to this way let's just have a look i'm pretty sure it's set to this way we'll see all right we just arrived my boy's gonna hit the waves Welcome to dooley beach. gonna check out the waves this is so remote bro i love it just no one around here except us this is like ballabog vibes almost you know <laughs> a little volleyball net probably just go for a swim Oh, this is so chill. This is the place you want to check out. Got myself a little beer. Gonna go back out to the water soon. But before I do, wanted to do the next question, application question three on the test. And so what we have to do in this one is draw a polynomial that satisfies the given characteristics. And we've done a few questions like this in the lecture videos, but in case it comes up on one of your tests, wanted to put this one here as well. So as I've mentioned in the lecture videos, what I like to do when I'm given characteristics of a polynomial or for any graph for that matter, I always like to plot the characteristics where there is no subjectivity involved. And so notice in the first set of characteristics, we are given the x-intercepts. And then in the second characteristic, we are given the y-intercept. So let's just plot those right away. And then the third, fourth, and fifth characteristics, those are gonna be a little bit tougher to deal with. So in the third characteristic, we are told that the function is gonna be less than zero. And what that means is that the y values are gonna be less than zero, or the y values are gonna be negative or the graph is going to be below the x-axis when the polynomial is between x values of four and six. And if you notice from the first characteristic, four and six, those are two of the x-intercepts. So we could draw the polynomial with negative y values between four and six. Now the fourth characteristic is going to be a little bit tricky. Notice that it's telling us that the polynomial f of x is greater than or equal to zero when x is greater than or equal to six and then when x is less than or equal to four. And so because the x-intercept on the right side, on the far right side is six, that part is fairly easy. We could just draw the polynomial going straight up from there, right? All the y values have to be positive from an x value of six to infinity. What's gonna be tougher is dealing with x values less than or equal to four, because if you notice the x-intercept on the far left side, there's a negative two there and the polynomial can't go below the x-axis for all those x values less than or equal to four and so what's going to have to happen is once the polynomial reaches that x-intercept of negative two it's going to have to bounce from it because if it was to go through the negative two notice it would fail that fourth characteristic because then the y values would be negative to the left of negative two however all of the y values have to be greater than or equal to zero to the left of positive four. And so the graph that we have now is satisfying those characteristics. And then finally, the fifth characteristic is fairly easy once you have the graph. It says the range of this polynomial is y is an element of real numbers, but y has to be greater than or equal to negative eight. Well, notice that that means that there's some kind of absolute minimum for this polynomial. And you could tell from the graph that the absolute minimum 
what happened between x values of four and six because that's the only area where the polynomial has negative y values. And so you would just put a point there, the lowest point. We actually don't know what the exact location of that point would be. You'll be learning tools in calculus to find that. And so you could pretty much use any x value you want between uh, four and six. Let's just pick the middle one, so five. And so we could say that that lowest point is uh, five and negative eight. And then notice that all the y values are greater than or equal to negative eight across the entire domain for this uh, polynomial. And then that's pretty much it. That graph satisfies all the uh, characteristics. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to make all of the characteristics work together. It might take you a few tries, a little trial and error. But uh, yeah, generally that's how I like to do it. First, I like to plot all of the points that are given because they have to be there. And then all the other stuff, I kind of trial and error through it until I get something, until I get a graph that satisfies all of the characteristics. Actually, these guys right here asked me to uh, come by. How are you guys? Actually, you know what? Let me grab my beer. Just a sec. Let's go have a proper chill session. What's up? What's up, what's up? How are you guys? Good morning. Good morning. Patrick, nice Hello, to meet you Patrick. guys. Nice, nice to meet you, Patrick. You guys live around here? Yeah, yeah. This is our office. Wow, incredible. This place is so remote. Where are you from? Toronto, Canada. Canada. Yeah. yeah. There is a tradition in the Philippines when we drink, just one glass for everybody. So we make this, uh, we oh, call it stagai. Okay. Stagai. So we let it spin. Okay. The rules is play right. Okay. It's always going to the right. For okay. The okay. So okay. This, this is my turn. Yeah. And I will drink this very wonderful beer. Okay. In front of my office. Please. Okay. In my office, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Office, okay? <laughs> the island life. Yeah, oh, you have to drink the whole cup. Yeah, the whole cup. <laughs> the history is next. So what is it called? Tagay. T-A-G-A-Y? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. And what is it, like a game? Or no? no it's just a tradition. For your shot. Sure. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Tagay. 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 All right. Tagay. 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 Mm. I went to Balabak. Balabak is nice as well, but it's in the south. It's a different culture. There are places here in the north, which is really like, you know, the access is only like through us locals. The people still speak the dialect, which is the, the local uh, language called Kuyunin. Okay. They don't speak the national language from kids all the way to the adults. Just, you know, to, because here, well, normally, yeah, you will see like, yeah, this is a beautiful beach. Yeah. But I am telling you, there are more beautiful beaches than really amazing. amazing. Nobody's there. We're explored with the local, but not with the tourists. We are the people to talk. Pure remoteness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool, man. You could feel the emptiness. Yes. If you want to empty your heart, you go with us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. It will be emptied. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you guys come here, keep that in mind. What's your name again? Sir Lancelot. Sir Lancelot. Look for this guy. He'll take you. <laughs> Actually, they just gave me a shirt. This was when you won something? Yeah, sir, uh, surfing competition. It's amazing. Let's see how it looks. It's <laughs> Perfect size, huh? The early 2000s hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look like Eminem. <laughs> That's sick. All right, I'm gonna end the video here, but I will catch you in the next question, next section, actually. We're gonna start the thinking section, and I will see you then. Not the most fun wake up. Let's go do this hike. Gonna drive over there to the Rock Cliff. Get the hike going. Here are our guides. The Blair Witch Project. 4 a.m. Sunrise Mission to Rock Cliff. This is our guide. What's your name? June. June. Now we're really starting. What is that, a worm? Yeah. I'll be honest. This is pretty intense, bro. <laughs> this is pretty crazy. These rocks are so sharp. All right, made it to the second wall. No, no, just. Or right. right. It's a big step. Okay. We've made it to the third wall. It's pretty friggin' massive. But I feel like this one's more less vertical than the others. It's just yeah. longer. This one's nothing but peanuts, baby. <laughs> this is about um, 15 meters high. It's got an angle, you know? Yeah. A lot of rest points. Officially made it with the boys. My man's got the drone going. June over there. 
Leanne is down there, our other guide. She's just chilling. And this is the view. Got some pictures, got some drone shots. We'll see how they turn out. I think it'll be good though. All right, so the next thinking, I'm just kidding. I'm definitely not doing question right now. I'll catch you guys later. All right, just descending now. Now that we have some light, let me show you the most intense part here. Just, we came down from there. So we had to climb that earlier. Now I gotta climb it down. Climbing it down is tougher for sure. Nice. That was a crazy wall. I think that was the hardest part. Places, imagine. <laughs> On the last stretch, <laughs> the legends June and Patrick and Eno, yeah, 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 squad, gang, gang, gang. And that's a wrap for Tarot Cliff, best guide, El Nido. This is about visiting my place and nice to see you again and welcome to paradise. Awesome, Mabuhai, thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Yo, first row. Again. Yeah, welcome to Cebu, man. Let's go. Cebu. Currently in Moal Ball. Just finished a sardine run with these guys. These guys are such good divers. I'm an amateur, so I was doing my best. We got some good shots, but uh, yeah, I'm a good swimmer, but in terms of diving, definitely got to do some more uh, work on that. Still haven't ate anything. Got a bit of a headache from all that diving, but it's all good. So let's start with the thinking section. Question number one. This is going to be probably one of the tougher questions on the test, if not the toughest. This is as tough of a question that uh, you can get in this unit. So I wanted to uh, throw you in with the sharks right away. And so what we are told is that when a polynomial is divided by x minus two, the remainder is negative seven. And then when the same polynomial is divided by x plus four, the remainder is 23. And what we have to find is the remainder when that same polynomial is gonna be divided by x squared plus two x minus eight. Now, a couple of things that I wanna mention. Notice that x squared plus two x minus eight, that factors into x plus four x minus two, which are the two factors that we are given in the question that we have remainders for. And also because when it's divided by x minus two, the remainder is negative seven, by the remainder theorem, we know that if we let that polynomial be f of x, we don't know what it is, but we do know that f of two would be negative seven. And then when it's divided by x plus four, the remainder is 23. That means by the remainder theorem, f of negative four is equal to 23. And so those two equations are gonna be used as the question goes on. Now, what we're mainly going to be using in solving this question is the division statement. So if you remember the division statement is a polynomial, sometimes it's called the dividend, is always gonna equal the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. And so our polynomial, f of x, is going to equal the divisor. The thing that we're dividing by is the x plus 4, x minus 2, which is the x squared plus 2, x minus 8. And then the quotient, we're not really going to use that, so let's just keep the word quotient in brackets there. And then we're going to have plus the remainder. Now, because we're dividing by a quadratic, because the divisor is a quadratic, we know that the remainder is actually going to be a linear expression. And so we could express the remainder as ax plus b, or if you want to put mx plus b as well, I'll just put ax plus b, and that's going to be the remainder. It's going to be a linear function. It's going to be a line. And so what we have to do is solve for a and b. Now that first equation that we got from the remainder theorem, f of two is equal to negative seven. 
Notice that when we plug in an x value of two in this division statement, so we'll have f of two is equal to six, that first bracket, times zero, times the quotient, plus two a plus b. When we plug in two for all the x's and so notice that that first part those three terms that are multiplying all of that is going to go to zero and then we know that f of two is basically equal to negative seven and so notice that we get an equation there 2a plus b is equal to negative seven and then the second equation f of negative four is equal to 23 so what we're going to do is we're going to plug in negative four for all of the x values and so we would have zero times negative six times the quotient minus four a plus b and then all of that is going to equal 23. well again notice that those first three terms that are multiplying because there's a zero in there that's just going to go away and so we end up with negative four a plus b equaling 23. and so now notice that we have two equations to solve we could do substitution or elimination solving for a and b we get an a value of negative five we get a b value of three and so the final answer the remainder the linear remainder would end up being negative five x plus three all right gonna go give this equipment back the fins the masks and then we're just gonna keep exploring cebu gonna go do a bunch of stuff but uh, I will catch you in the next location and the next question. Peace out. All right, next day. Got the bikes here in Cebu, first time. These guys are still getting ready inside. So I wanted to come out here. We could get the next question going. We're gonna go to a beach around here. It's called White Beach. I'll probably do a question there as well. I'll just post up here for a bit. And let's get into the next thinking question. So in this particular question, we are told when the polynomial f of x is divided by x minus three, the remainder from that is going to be one less than triple the remainder when the same polynomial f of x is divided by x minus two. And what we have to do is find the missing a value in the polynomial. There's only one coefficient to solve for. What we could do, let's, there's two remainders they're talking about here. So we could label them R1 and R2. We don't know what they are, but we do know the division that is happening. And so if R1 is the remainder when the polynomial f of x is gonna be divided by x minus three, then by the remainder theorem, we know R1 is equal to f of three. And then the second remainder, R2, we could let that be equal to the remainder when the polynomial f of x is divided by x minus two. And by the remainder theorem, we know that the remainder is gonna be f of two, right? So we could say R2 is gonna equal f of two. And so if we read this carefully, what they are saying is that the first remainder, R1, is going to be equal to three times r2 minus one right one less than triple the remainder when f of x is going to be divided by x minus two okay so r1 is equal to three r2 minus one well we already know that r1 is equal to f of three so what we could do is we could plug in an x value of three in the polynomial on that left side and then we'll have three times in brackets r2 and r2 is equal to f of two and so in the brackets there we could just put the expression for f of two meaning we would plug in an x value of two into the polynomial f of x and then after the bracket we still have the minus one and notice that at this point we just have one variable to solve for the a value and when you go through all that algebra the a value is going to be two all right so not too hectic in terms of the algebra, but just setting it up, going through the wording. You gotta be super careful how you use the remainder theorem and how you set up that initial equation where R1 equals three times R2 minus one, but then from there, you're all good. You ready to go, boss, or what? Hey, let's get it, bro. Let's get some <laughs> sick shots at the beach. All right, yo, beach time. Gonna follow those guys. See you there. Yeah, right? Hey! <laughs> Arrived 
to White Beach. Yo, this is nice, bro. Stan is fairly white, so I'll give him that. I'm just gonna chill out here, do the next question with you. Usually I don't do two questions in a day, but uh, the thinking section is a bit of a grind, so I just wanna get these out of the way, to be honest. And in this particular question, what is happening is we are given the volume of a cylinder, an expression for the volume of a cylinder. We're told that the height is X minus four, and what they're asking us to do is to find an expression for the radius. Now, just in general, we know that the volume of a cylinder is equal to what? Pi r squared h. And notice that that's in factored form because there are terms that are multiplying. The pi, the r squared, and the h, those are all multiplying. You can put them all in their own separate brackets. But the problem is that our expression for the volume that we're given is not in factored form, it's in expanded form. And so what we have to do is take that volume expression, factor it, and then we can match it up with the pi r squared h format. And then from there, hopefully we can see what the radius is gonna be because we already know the height. The height is gonna be x minus four. What we want is an expression for that radius. So let's get into factoring the volume. So first thing, what do we always check for? Can we take out a greatest common factor? And notice that in this case, we can. We could take out a four. We could also take out a pi. There's a pi in all of the expressions. And we could also take out an x squared, which is the lowest degree that x has in all of the expressions. So four pi x squared we could take out and what we would be left with is a cubic function in brackets. And then we have to factor this cubic function. Now, because we were told that the height was x minus four, well, we know that x minus four then has to be a factor or should be a factor, right? Because that is part of the factored volume expression, pi r squared h. So what we could do is we could take that cubic function and divide it by x minus four. And notice that when we do that, when we go through the whole long division process, we would get a remainder zero. What would we be left with? x squared plus six x plus nine. And then notice that that is a perfect square trinomial. That's gonna factor into x plus three squared. And so notice at this point, we factored the volume expression. We have four pi x squared, x minus four, and then x plus three squared. But what we have to do is try to get it in the same format as that general volume formula, pi r squared h. Well, notice that the pi we have, right? That was what we factored out. The height is given as x minus four. We have that factor, which means that the rest of the expressions, the four x squared and the x plus three squared, all of that has to equal the remaining expression in the volume formula, which is the R squared. But notice that they're not asking for an expression for R squared, they're asking an expression for the radius. And so what we have to do is we have to take the 4X squared and the X plus three squared and try to rewrite it as some kind of expression in brackets squared, because that's exactly how the R squared is. And in this case, the r, the radius, is gonna be some kind of polynomial expression. And so we have to try to rewrite that other side as something in brackets squared, and then whatever's gonna end up being in that bracket, that's gonna be the expression for the radius. So first thing you wanna do here is the 4x squared, you actually wanna take that and rewrite it as 2x in brackets squared. So now you'll have 2x in brackets squared times x plus three squared, and then notice that both of those you can combine. Because in general, if you ever have two expressions that are multiplying with the same exponent, so for example, if we had like m squared times n squared, you could rewrite that as m times n in brackets squared. Well, notice now we got two expressions with the same exponent. So we could rewrite that as big brackets, 2x bracket x plus three, close the big bracket, and then all of that is going to be squared. And then you could keep that big bracket factored with 2x and x plus three, or you can expand it, and inside the bracket you would have 2x squared plus 6x. And that ends up being your answer. That ends up being the expression for the radius, 2x squared plus 6x. So whether you have it factored, right? 2x bracket x plus three, or 2x squared plus 6x, that's probably the format I would recommend putting it in. 
that ends up being your radius. So again, not too bad of algebra. The factoring is not bad, right? You take out a greatest common factor and then you are given one of the factors already, X minus four, and you just go through the division process. What's tricky is kind of like putting it in that pi r squared h format and then recognizing that you have to get an expression for the radius in brackets squared. And then from there, you uh, you get your expression, you get your solution, and it's 2x squared plus 6x. All right, that's a wrap for the question. I'm gonna get back into enjoying the sunset. The uh, colors are uh, looking pretty insane. Tomorrow we are going to Oslo, and that's where all the whale sharks are from what I've heard. Actually, in the morning, I think I'm gonna go for a bike ride because we don't have to give the bikes back till the afternoon. So I think we're gonna stay in this area till the afternoon and then go to uh, Oslo in the evening. Yeah, I'm signing off for now. Peace. Everything all good? Huh? Yeah, yeah, all good, all good. I'm just gonna put on a I've also got too much cash in my wallet. I don't wanna risk it in case there's some, I don't know, police that they just open my wallet and take out everything, you know? You're gonna just have a little bit with you? Yeah. You think they'll stop us? Probably not. All right, just arrived at the waterfalls. Now we're walking on this random wooden bridge that doesn't feel too stable. I'm distracting myself with the camera. Oh wow, those waterfalls are crazy. Bro, look how big those waterfalls are, eh? That's nuts. Those are higher than any of the ones I've seen in Bali. Have you seen ones higher than that? In Bali? Have you been to Sukumpul? Yeah. You think Sukumpul is... Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, Sukumpul might be higher. The water is just much pure. Mm. Super cool. Very nice. Yo, let's pump up the ISO a bit. Okay, what happened? Yeah, we got stranded, bro. That took us too far. But it's all good, we're just gonna stand on the road. <laughs> hey, if it's I a thumbs up, up, thumbs up. Hey, he's stopping. Hey! <laughs> Yo! I wanted to get the truck though. <laughs> yeah, that'd be crazy, right? <laughs> hey, the boys are here to help out. Yo, yo, yo. Careful, Patrick, careful. Patrick, Patrick. Yo! Hey! Oh, we got on the bus. Hey, you're a legend. Thank you, man. Thanks, bro. Back on the bus. Let's get it. We made it. Got another bus. Oh. Yo, enjoy, enjoy your food. That looks delicious, man. <laughs> Yo, what are we having for dinner today? The chicken sizzig is a little late, so. <laughs> Yum. Starving, bro. <laughs> just, just rice and calamansi, man. Just straight clean protein, bro. It's full Yo, of calves. this is what we do. Full, full shred. All right. So pre-whale mm. shark meal, <laughs> chicken sizzle. Clean chick protein, bro. Chicken sizzic. <laughs> All right, that's the kind of life we're uh, living right now. Fuck <laughs> this, man. I'm not ready. Uh, uh, my man from France here. What's your name? Florian. Florian. Benj. About to go do some whale shark watching. All of us are uh, super fascinated right now with these little kittens. How old are they? One week. One week? Yeah. Wow. All right, heading down to the beach. The calm before the storm. All right, here we go. Huh? Where? Oh, shit. Well, if I get eaten by whale shark, it was uh, nice knowing you. All right, let's go see what's up. Ooh. All right, we'll see how 
how those turn out. Super fun. A little tiring for a 4 a.m. to wake up. We actually have a flight today from Cebu City to Shargao. So we're going to take a bus there soon. And I'll probably just catch you at the airport. Peace. All right. Finally made it to the airport. Been a crazy day today. 4 a.m. wake up to see the whale sharks. And then we took a five hour ride from Oslo to here. And now we are gonna take a flight from here, Cebu, to the next island, Shargao, and that'll be our final destination. Before getting on this flight, I wanted to do the next question, the last thinking question of the test. And what we have to do in this question is find the equation of a cubic function in standard form that has a y-intercept of negative 60 is divisible by the quadratic 2x squared minus 9x minus 15 and it has a remainder of negative 22 when the cubic function is divided by the divisor x plus 2. Now what's important to notice in this question is that we're looking for the equation of a cubic function and we know that a cubic function has a degree of 3. Well notice that in the second characteristic we're told that the cubic function is divisible by 2x squared minus 9x minus 15, which means 2x squared minus 9x minus 15, that quadratic is actually a factor of the cubic function. Well, if it's a cubic function, then that means there's gonna be another factor that's gonna be a linear function, because a linear function, let's say ax plus b, times a quadratic, when you expand all that, that's gonna give you a cubic function. Well, now notice that we have an equation in factored form for the cubic function. We just have to solve for that a and b value, right? For that linear factor. Well, we could do that with the number one y-intercept of negative 60. That means f of zero is equal to negative 60. And then also because we're told that when we divide by x plus 2, the remainder is going to be negative 22 by the remainder theorem, f of negative 2 is gonna equal negative 22. And so what we could do, those are two points on the cubic function. We could plug in both of those points for x and y in the function and then solve for a and b. So then when you do that, a value would be three, the b value would be four. So that final linear factor is gonna be three x plus four. And then they want this in standard form, so then you could take the three x plus four multiply it by that quadratic factor 2x squared minus 9x minus 15 and that will give you your standard form cubic function all right i'm gonna head to the gate now they're already calling us flight is in about 45 minutes patrick's paranoid because his bag is pretty big bro and this is light man nah man you're not getting on that's too much bro what is this where's the sticker where's the sticker bro there's no sticker should go baby let's go yo Gang, gang. Always shredding. So just landed in Shargao and ended up renting a motorbike right away. It made sense that I could rent a bike from the airport and then drive the bike back when I fly out, so. And then Giannis and Eno, they're in the tuk-tuk over there in front. And this is what I'm starting out with. These guys got the VIP, yo. <laughs> These guys have the VIP. I feel like the queen, bro. Huh? I feel like the queen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yo, it's all good, bro. I got I got a lot of experience driving in this kind of weather, bro. Fuck it. In Italy, Bali, this is this is child's play for me at this point. This is a crazy life. Oh, some kids playing basketball right now. <laughs> this is nuts. First half hour in Shardow. Wow. The rain has stopped. Nice smooth ride. Hello, how's it going? 
guessing we're probably like 15 minutes away. Oh, that stretch of rain was crazy. Already feeling the Shargal vibes, definitely different than uh, Palawan and Cebu. It's crazy how each place, even in the same country, has its own kind of vibe, you know? Hey! hey. All right, let's go see what Shargal has to offer. All right, officially made it. Starting off with the island hopping. We are in Guyam Island right now. We're gonna go hop around to different islands, but most people are exploring the beach on the other side. So I came here to the more chill area so we could start the uh, next section of the test, communication question one. And what we have to do here is take these two functions that we are given and describe two sets of transformations for each function that are applied on the parent function x to the power of three and x to the power of four. So notice for this first function that we're given y equals negative four bracket two x minus three to the power of three minus two. Notice that the parent function is the cubic function. And remember the general transformation format with the a, k, d, and c value. So we have to try to rewrite this function we're given in that format. It is almost in that format, but notice that the two is a attached to the x, we want to factor out that k value and we'd end up with negative four bracket, big bracket, two, smaller bracket, x minus three over two, close bracket, close bracket, all to the power of three minus two. So you got to be careful because notice how the d value now becomes positive three over two right it's not positive three like it was in the original format because you got to factor out that k value so we can list out our transformations with the a value of negative four there's a vertical stretch by four also there's a reflection in the x-axis because it is negative the k value of two that's a horizontal compression by one over two the d value of positive three over two means that the graph gets translated three over two units to the right and then a c value of negative two means the graph gets translated two units down. Now, they're asking for two sets of transformations. So we have one set of transformations. The question is, how can we get another set of transformations? Well, I've mentioned this before in the lecture videos. You don't necessarily need a K value transformation because, for example, in the general format, what you could do is you can distribute that exponent three into the bracket. So you'd have K to the power of three and then X minus D to the power of three. And then notice that the A times the K to the power of three, well, that's just going to be a constant itself. And so we can just have that entire constant be an A value. So it is possible to always rewrite these functions and with a cubic function in particular, we could rewrite as y equals a bracket x minus d to the power of three plus c. And so applying this to the function that we have, we would have negative four still out there. And then notice that that k value of two, we could take that to the power of three. And then the x minus three over two, we would have to take that to the power of three. And then notice that negative four times two to the power of three, that would give us negative 32. So now we have a new function it's actually the same function. If you took both of these functions and graphed them in decimals, they would be the exact same thing. But we have a new format for this same function, y equals negative 32 bracket x minus three over two minus two. And so notice that in this case, the k value is just one, right? There is not gonna be any transformation with the k value and now the a value is going to be negative 32. The d value, the c value, those stay the same. So those transformations stay the same. And so now with the a value being negative 32, that would be a vertical stretch by 32. And then it would also be reflected in the x axis because it is still negative. All right, so same function but two different sets of transformations for the same function. And now the next function, notice we got y equals two bracket one over three x plus three to the power of four plus two. So notice here the parent function is x to the power of four, the quartic 
function. So same thing, notice that we have to factor out that K value. So when we factor out the one over three, we'd be left with Y equals two bracket, one over three, another bracket, X plus nine, close bracket, close bracket, all that to the power four plus two. And so now we have our A value, K value, D value, and C value. So with our A value of two, that's just a vertical stretch by two. The K value of one over three, remember we got to flip it. So that's going to be a horizontal stretch by three. The D value of negative nine, that's going to be translated nine units to the left and then a C value of positive two, that's gonna be translated two units up. Now for the second set of transformations, we can do the same thing with a quartic function. So what we could do is we could take the K value to the power four and the X minus D to the power four, and then the A times the K to the power four, that's just gonna be one constant. That could be our new A value. So another format we could put a quartic function in is Y equals A bracket X minus D to the power four plus C. Right, so the K value would be one. There would be no transformations with the K value. So if we apply that here, the one over three would go to the power of four and then two times one over three to the power of four, that would give us two over 81. And then we would have X plus nine to the power of four. And then we would have that C value of positive two still. And this is the same function, just in a different format. Right, so if you took both of these functions and graphed them, then you would see it would be the same graph in Desmos. So with this new format, the D value is still negative nine, the C value is still positive two, but in this case, the K value now is gonna be one, and then we have a new A value of two over 81. So now with this new set of transformations, the K value, there is no transformations on that, that K value of one. And then the A value of two over 81, that would be a vertical compression by two over 81. And that is the second set of transformations. So with these kinds of power functions, you can always get a second set of transformations because you can always make that k value be one and then get a brand new a value yeah i know right jeez money Ooh, shooter's touch. Ooh, men's hard, men's cooking, <laughs> men's on fire. <laughs> Yo, was that in too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. what? Swish, bro, swish. <laughs> Nothing but net. Nothing but net. I hope it looks like a swish on the camera. You, know <laughs> you can't tell if it went in or not. Sick. Yo, knocking down shots here. Yo, this is my first love, bro. Got and on to the next island. How are you? Made a little friend here on the beach. He uh, drove out from the main area. The main area in Chargao, it's called General Luna. This place is called Mag Popongo Beach. I'll put the name of it, but it's a lot more chill. Ah. Uh, Last day in Chargao, and then one of my last days in the Philippines overall. Tomorrow I fly to Manila, and uh, and then Manila to Toronto. A little bit sad to be leaving Asia. I've been here for a few months, Bali and the Philippines, but a little bittersweet feeling. I am looking forward to getting back to Toronto, seeing family. I do have another flight booked out of there, but that's in a few months. I'm gonna be heading back to South America. So anyway, let's uh, do the last question of the test, communication question two. So what we are given here is a cubic function, f of x equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And we have to explain what are the conditions on the coefficients if f of x is gonna be even, and in part B, if f of x is going to be odd. Now remember, when a function is even, all the exponents have to be even, and there are constants allowed. So notice that the coefficients that are going to have odd exponents, so the A and the C, 
those have to be zero, right, for this function to be even. And then it actually turns into a quadratic. And so then the B value can be any real number except for zero. And then the D value can be any real number, including zero as well. It doesn't have to necessarily be there. Now, technically the B value can also be zero, but then the D value would have to be some kind of number other than zero. And then you would just have a horizontal line. You would have Y equals some kind of number. And then a horizontal line technically is an even function as well. So if you had like Y is equal to three, for example, it would just be a horizontal line at a Y value of three and then that would be an even function. It would be symmetrical about the y-axis. And then for part B, if this function was going to be odd, well, remember, for any standard form polynomial, a function is going to be odd if all of the exponents are only odd and there's no constants allowed like there is for an even function. Okay, so because there's no constants allowed, the d value has to be zero. And then because there's no even exponents allowed, the B value would also have to be zero. And so then you have the A value and the C value left. Those technically can be any real number. And then one of them can be zero. So for example, you could have like uh, A being five. So you'd have five X cubed and then you could have the C value then being zero. So five X cubed, that is technically an odd function or you can have the C value being something other than zero and then the A value being zero, but then it would be a linear function. So you could have like Y is equal to five X if the C value is five. And then another case is that the A value and the C value, both of them are some kind of real number other than zero. So for example, if the A value was negative two and then the C value is five, you'd have negative two X cubed plus five X. Right, And that there, notice, is going to be an odd function because all of the exponents are odd, the exponents 3 and 1. And it would satisfy that case where f of negative x would equal negative f of x, if you remember that from the first chapter when we talked about symmetry of functions. All right, so those are the different cases for this function that was given on the coefficients if f of x was to be odd. All right, and that is it for the test. So I am going to go and chill out. Giannis is already chilling there, <laughs> waving goodbye. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, test. Hopefully you got some value from it. If you did, if you can subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends. If you feel like you need personalized help, like I always mention, you could hit me up whenever my contact details are on the website. You can text me on WhatsApp and we could book some Zoom sessions. I'm always tutoring students seven days a week, high school, university, one-on-one, -on -one, in groups, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so I will see you in the next video. Maybe I'll do another test in a different country. We'll see. But uh, yeah, until then, I'll see you around. Peace. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you wanna see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.